G'day everyone, this afternoon I'm on Lake Nilakuti and I'm going to be trolling for Yellow Belly. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Now trolling pretty much means dragging a lure behind the kayak and in this, on this occasion I'm using a little one well lunch in bright green colour. I don't know how long I'll leave it on for. The water's actually quite dirty. Hopefully it's clear enough for the fish to see the lure. But anyway, the 50 mil one well lunch. I'll cast that out behind me. I'll pin my fishing rod under my leg. And then I'll just paddle around really slowly. And just let that lure dive. Now I'm not expecting a lot of action between now and sort of just before sunset. I reckon the last hour of the day is the time of day that I do best and I'm trawling for yellow belly over here in this lake. And as I'm going I'll give you a few pointers and tips as I go and just explain you know, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it just to maybe help you get onto a few fish when you can get out yourself. I really need to catch a fish to uh, help my confidence. I'm not feeling overly confident. The water is much dirtier than normal. Like it's not a clear lake at the best of times but it's usually a lot clearer than this. I can only see about probably 15 centimetres into the water at best. I don't know whether you can see whether the camera angle is pointing down but I've actually got tracksuit pants on today. Combination of it's not an overly hot day it's only about 18 or 19 it's nice and warm. Shorts would be okay although it will cool down when the sun sets but also just stopping my legs from getting sunburnt as well. I've hooked up, I'm not joking. I didn't get the hook up on film. It's only a very small fish. If I didn't know any better, I'd think it was a small redfin the way it hit. Well, small lures catch small fish. I've only been trawling for not very long, but I needed this. This is a lovely little yellow belly. Look at that. This is just what I needed. The confidence boost that I needed. That is the confidence boost that I needed because the water is so dirty. Nice little yellow belly. Caught on the little 50 millimeter one well lunch. Awesome. Whoop. As soon as they flick, I just throw him back. That's a better option than getting a uh, hook stuck in my finger. I think he's got off, has he? He did too. Good. Saved me the trouble. Awesome. That's the best possible outcome. Because I've got two lots of triple hooks, as soon as it flicks and I lose control of the fish, just throw it away so that I don't get the hook stuck in my finger. I'm excited. Wow, that happened a lot quicker than I expected. <laughs> if I'd known it was going to happen that quick, I'd left the camera rolling. I'm probably not lucky to get the hook up on film. Hook ups on film because I don't know how long it's going to be between strikes. But later in the day, when it starts getting dark, I'll just leave the camera rolling. And uh, hopefully I can get the hook ups then. And hopefully also the wind will drop off a little bit then as well. Now my whole mission here... I want to try and keep my lure close to the bottom, within a foot or two off the bottom. And I don't know how deep it is or how deep my lure is running, so I watch my rod tip closely. At the moment it's swimming freely. The moment it starts touching the bottom, that'll tell me I'm getting too close to the edge and I'll move back out. And if it doesn't touch the bottom for ages, then I'll go to the right and get in a bit closer to the edge again. Because it might be too deep. The whole mission is just to keep that limit lure swimming just there. It's just touching the bottom there now, you see that? So now I go to the right, go back out a bit deeper again. Or I can reel a little bit of line in and not have as much line out. One or the other. So I'll go out deeper now. Try and get the lure up off the bottom again. really running now it's just started swimming now it's just so right there now it's in the zone it's just off the bottom because it just stopped running the bottom now it's, it's not touching anything but it was a second ago so I reckon I'm you know just a matter of inches off the bottom and that's what I'll be doing all afternoon just zigzagging in and out and in and out and trying to keep my line my lure as close as I can to the bottom but not actually dragging the bottom that's how I like to fish for yellow belly like this when I'm trolling for yellow belly and redfin. I'll use the exact same technique when I'm trolling for redfin in lakes like Lake Hume or the Waranga Basin or Lake Buffalo. Oh, 
Come on, that might have been a touch. It wasn't touching the bottom or anything, it's a sharp little jab. I reckon something might have tapped that then. But being that the water's so dirty... There you go, yeah, there's a fish, he came back. I was just about to say, being that the water's so dirty, he's probably not going to come back. A bit of weight to this fish. Quite a bit heavier than the last one, this might be an OK yellow. It could be a cod too, which is close season, so it's got to be released. I was worried that being, I was just about to say, being that the water's dirty, it might not be able to follow it and hit it again. What have we got? If it's a yellow, it's going to be a, might be a nice yellow if it's a yellow. What have we got here? That's a Murray cod. I haven't got any fish grips with me. I don't mind catching small cod in, here in the springtime. It's, it's, uh, it's close season and they're all going to go back. I don't like to interrupt them too much in the river, I get a bit disappointed when I accidentally catch them, but in here it sort of doesn't bother me too much, they stock them in here anyway. I've got pliers with me in the bag, I should have them out. Actually after I release this cod, I might, uh, I might get them pliers out, there we go. Lovely little Murray cod of around 35 centimetres. See you later mate. Awesome, two fish on the board already. Now I'm going to get some pliers out, ready for next time. And just uh, before I forget to tell you, I will put links and information in the video description below to where you can find these little one well lunches. I am an idiot. I thought those pliers were in here, but they're in the big orange uh, tackle box that I take fishing with me in the car. So I don't have any pliers with me. Now that's stupid. When you're doing this kind of fishing, you should always have pliers. I'm not going to put that down to me forgetting them. I'm just going to put it down to me being out of form. I haven't done this kind of fishing for quite a while. This is my first kayak trolling mission at Lake Nilakuti this spring. So I'm going to put that down to uh, just being a bit rusty. I'll <laughs> go for getting them pliers. All right. As they say, it's all fun and games until someone loses a big yellow belly. What I just had a really big strike and I thought I wasn't filming and I reached up to uh, hit the camera to hit record and I hit stop. But I've missed the fish anyway. Wow, I've only been on the water half an hour and I've already caught two and missed one other one. Let's give it a yank. I reckon I might have a bit of weed on it so I'll give it a real fast yank like that. So that if there's any weed on it, this might just help that uh, weed break off. It's a fish, got him. Doesn't feel like that cod, it feels more like that first yellow that I caught, not very big. And having got those head shakes. And that's exactly what it is. Another lovely little yellow belly. That's yellow number two. Yellow belly number two. Well, the yellow belly's in the boat. The, the, the lure's out there. Yellow belly, see you later, mate. Two yellows and one cod. I'm having a ripper of a time here, the Savo. I'm loving it. As Camel says, loving myself sick, mate. I'm probably likely to go to a larger lure at some stage. So a decent yellow belly will absolutely hit this lure, there's no doubt about that. But so do all the small ones. I can go to the next size lunch, seeing as though it's working so well, or a sumo, or even a little old mate. I've even got a couple of those Bassman tubby native minnows here. They go really well in here for this sort of thing. Got plenty to choose from. If you look here, you can see that fence line goes down into the lake. I'm going to reel my line in. I want it all the way in before the kayak goes past the fence because they are an absolute death trap for lures. <laughs> if you're ever on any. Lake Hume's got some of those fences as well. If you're ever on any of these lakes and you see fences going into the water like that, they will steal your lures if you're not careful. It's always a good idea to reel it in and just. Uh, cast out again once you get past it a bit. Got 
got him. Oh, that's a fish yet. We got him. He's not very big, but I've hooked up. It's a little weeny yellow belly. Gee, he's got deep. I wonder if you can spit it out like the other one. If I just throw him in there and give him plenty of slack. Nah. <laughs> wasn't out far beyond the kite because I was dragging the bottom and as I get further up in this little bay here it's just getting shallower and shallower lovely little yellow belly uh, go on see you later mate oh yeah the fish aren't getting any big I'm kind of banking on this strong northerly wind dropping off a little bit towards sunset so I don't get blown off the lake paddling back to the car but at least where I am I'm close to the edge I'd never paddle across a lake like this. Just in case the wind springs up and you get in trouble. It's always good to be near the bank. Could get out there if I needed to. Wouldn't be ideal in bare feet, but I could do it if I had to. <laughs> Gee, this wind sprung up. It's a bit of a concern. She'll be right, mate. It's getting rather blustery. I've just been out of my kayak for the last 20 minutes. I sat on here. You can see where I sat because there's a wet patch. <laughs> I've got a wet backside. I got out, I had a stretch, something to nibble on. And I've changed lures. I'm going to the same coloured lure, but this is an old mate. It's one of the smaller old mates. It's just a bit fatter and got a wider sway. If that doesn't pick up any fish, I'll be going back to that little 50 mil lunch pretty quickly. <laughs> anyway, for anybody wondering, if you're new to my channel and don't already know, this is the kayak that I use. It's made by Safari H2O, and the model is the Murray. Safari H2O Murray. And I've got an Esky in the back here. It's got some ice bricks in case I catch a nice yellow belly and a couple of cans of soft drink. But that's actually really handy because it gives me a bit of back support there as well. These uh, chairs are probably okay for lighter people, but for me, you put a lot of pressure on them when I lean back, and having the esky behind me there just helps keep it nice and uh, nice and comfortable. And a landing that there just in case I get a big one. Gee, I've thought of everything today, except the pliers. When I was in that bay there, then I didn't realise just how windy it actually is out here. Pretty sheltered in there. I forgot to mention earlier when I was showing you the one well lunch, if you want to buy one of them, I've actually got a discount code. There'll be links in the video description below to everything I can find that I'm using. There's a discount code for the One Well Lures, and that's Robbie10. But all the information will be in the video description below the video anyway. Haven't caught a fish for a while. I must be nearly due. It's just picked up something and stopped swimming. A reindeer fish. If it's catching reindeer fish, that means it's down in the zone. Gee, days without wind are something of a rarity at the moment. Calm days are few and far between. Keep your eye on the tip of my fishing rod. You can see that the lure is dragging the bottom, so I move out a little bit deeper, just keeping the lure close to the bottom. And then watch what happens. You can see by my rod tip that the lure is now swimming freely. It's not dragging on the bottom. That must be just off the bottom, just where I like it. Got him. Oh, geez, that's a hard hit. Gee, that fish hit hard. Bang. There's some weight in this fish. If this is a yellow belly, it's a good one. <laughs> it's got to be a cod with a strike like that. Whoa. Put on a bigger lure to try and catch a bigger fish, and I've done that. I just got to hope it's a yellow belly and not a cod. It is a feisty something. It's green. <laughs> it's a lovely yellow belly. So that I put on the bigger lure. And I caught a bigger fish, and it's going in my esky. I'm glad I brought the landing there. Gee, you hit that hard. That is a lovely yellow belly. Perfect. Perfect size for the plate. 
You beauty. Awesome. That's probably a 45 centimetre yellow belly. Oh, maybe not that. Probably 40 to 43 or something. Anyway, you ripper. I'm excited. Now I'm happy. How good is that, eh? Bigger lures catch bigger fish. That's the small size, the old mate. I trawled along there with the little one well lunch. I caught four fish. Trawling back, I only had the one strike, but it was a bigger one. Bigger lures catch less fish, but bigger fish. Awesome. So happy. All right, I'm going to come over to the bank here to deal with this fish. I'll clean it now and just throw it straight in the esky under ice. You see this? This is what I do when I catch a fish. A couple of ice bricks under it, a couple of ice bricks over it, and it stays very cold. I do that as soon as I catch it, just to keep it fresh and make sure that it's okay and doesn't go off or, or get spoiled. Righto. Oh shit. Duh. Every village has its idiot. I've just climbed into my kayak, gone to go fishing again and left me right over here on the bank. I laid it next to my fish to get a photo. <laughs> left it there. <laughs> Every circus has its clown, is that what they say? Every village has its idiot. <laughs> ah, let's try that again. <laughs> I was so happy to see that yellow belly because it hit so hard and it was quite a heavy fish. I was almost certain it was a Murray cod and it's closed cod season. I'm a happy man. This is a much different experience going with the wind. It's a lot quieter. Having got the wind blowing in my face. I barely even need to paddle. I was full on paddling against the wind. <laughs> now I'm just drifting and controlling the steer with the odd paddle here and there. Gee, these little old mates dive well. That's just dragging through the bottom down there. I've reeled in quite a bit of line just to get it up a little bit off the bottom. Oh, that's a fish hit. That got him. Just as I reeled it in, I reeled it in because it was dragging the bottom. I got it just off the bottom and a fish hit it. I was just about to say, the other option is I can just go out a bit deeper. But before I had a chance to say that, a small fish grabbed it. Another little yellow belly. I noticed before that this old mate is missing one of the back hooks. The trebles are actually doubles. Another little yellow. Go on. Don't worry, be happy now. I'm happy. I have had not a great week. I've had a car at the mechanics all week getting a, a small job done on it that uh, was going to take an hour but ended up being without a car for three days. <laughs> but I just haven't had the greatest week. And now it's a Friday afternoon and I'm happy. This is the happiest and the most peaceful that I've felt all week. I'm at peace. It just does not feel windy at all when you've got the wind behind you. It just feels calm. But the fact that I'm barely even paddling tells me it's windier than I think. I'm looking straight into the sun here. I've just changed lures. I've caught two on the old mate, including the biggest. But I think I caught four or five on the one well. The one well is getting the, uh, the quantity, but the... The old mate's getting the quality, the bigger fish. But anyway, I'm going to go to this. I'm going to go back to a one well, a one well lunch, 50 mil. But I'm going to try a silver colour. Let's just see how that goes. Got him. Have I still got him? This is tiny. That's a smaller lure, smaller fish. We well, didn't have any trouble seeing the uh, silver one. That's the smallest one today, I think. Smallest one today. The smallest one today. He's got the hook down a little bit deep and he's the smallest one today. Come on, mate. I dropped it into the bottom of the kayak. <laughs> Swimming around the kayak. Ah. Ah. Right. Smallest one today. See you later, mate. This day is wonderful. It's just absolutely great. Thank 
get back to where you once belong. That's a fish. Got him. No, I missed him. It was only a gentle little touch. Probably from a gentle little fish. Definitely a fish strike, that one. But he's back. Got him this time. He's not overly big. <laughs> Don't realise how windy it is until you turn around and paddle into the wind. Deja vu. Same size as the last one. Great to see these small yellow belly in here. One day they'll be big ones. Oh, I threw him back and then he jumped back out. I think he was homesick. I'm just about to head back out for the last uh, the last hurrah before I pack up, but I've got a bit of bush poetry for you. I thought I might go nice and bright for the highly anticipated twilight bite. <laughs> I'm going back to an old mate, but this time it's a bright orange and yellow one with a few spots on it. Well folks, the twilight bite was a thing of beauty, wasn't it? I didn't get a touch, not a single touch. It's 10 to 8 and I have not had a touch since 6 o'clock. But between half past 3 and 6 o'clock, the fishing was nuts and then they just shut down at tea time. Anyway, I've had an absolute blast. I hope you've got something out of this video. Thank you all very much for watching.